Hey, what is up guys? My name is Kodak the Bear, and today we're going to be playing a game called Icy. Now, if you haven't heard of Icy, this game is, um, it's for free on Game Jolt. And basically, the gist of this game is, it is a post-apocalyptic world in the form of, um, somewhat like an Ice Age. Like an Ice Age sort of thing, so... I thought it was a pretty cool idea. If you guys know me, I do enjoy my fair share of survival games. So this one seemed to fit in perfect for me. And what you can do here is, um, this is the character customization. You can either be male or female, which is always good. I don't know what the 7 up in the corner means there. And you can choose your name, but I'll just choose Kodak the Bear because that is our YouTube name. Or my YouTube name. And then, like I said, this plate, it kind of looks like Plague Incorporated, but with uh, the, uh, the aspect around survival. And there is a somewhat of a story to this game, which the story is explained right here. Two years ago, you lost your memory in a strange accident. Since that day, you were welcomed in a nomad family and lived as a nomad. Today, it's just like any other day. You're in the forest hunting with Jerome, one of your companions and familiars. Also, this uh, has some pretty intense music in here, too. Some very intense music. You wake up into the woods, surrounded by the snow and ancient trees. A cold wind is blowing on your face, and you suddenly feel that your arms and legs are chilled to the bone. You feel a gentle touch on your shoulders. It's Jerome that woke you up. The bait you set up two hours ago finally lured a beast. Wake up, we have prey on the site. He smiles at you and keeps talking. Come on, don't be lazy and wake the F up. You still feel con uh, feel confused, and the white glowing snow dazzles you. But you soon manage to get on your feet. The old man is watching you with a friendly smile, just waiting for your brain to start properly working again. And now you can see how, um... It kind of has, like, I wouldn't really, yeah, I guess you could say Fallout. It's kind of Fallout-esque. You can choose what you want to say. Uh, why did I come? Don't be annoying. I don't know why I even came with you. Uh, just give me a second. I can barely feel my legs. Uh, what do we have here? Look at that majestic deer. Today might be your lucky day. Uh, we'll see. Let's be quiet. Wait for it. I agree, my friend. It's been a month since the last time we ate some deer. Let's get ready. All right, that one seems pretty good. The deer gets closer. Lured by the bait you play some hours ago, it is a truly majestic beast and could provide food for several days. And now here, there's certain options, obviously, that impact the game. Maybe a little bit. Uh, you raise your bow and whisper to Jerome, I will take the shot. Let Jerome shoot. Go on, I'm still a little sleepy and we don't want to scare it away. Um, for the heck of it, I'll let Jerome shoot it. Jerome uh, slowly raises his bow and prepares an arrow. As you want, lazy man. Jerome takes some seconds to aim at to the deer. Then he shoots an arrow that pierces through the beast's neck. The deer emits a strangled cry, falls to the ground, and quickly stops moving. Jerome turns to you with a large smile on his face. Not a bad shot, wasn't it? He puts away his bow and starts walking towards the carcass. You get closer to the deer. The majestic beast is dead and will provide days of food for your family. Let's take our dinner out of here. It's not even noon. Hector will have something else for us to do. You can be sure of that. You tie the deer to the strong pole and you head back to the camp. Drone keeps talking for you for all the trips. Still a little excited for what you're bringing back. Now here's what I say Well, this game kind of looks like Plague Incorporated. It kind of looks like um, the airplanes that used to fly across the map. And I just want to show you something to you real quick. These are settlements that you can eventually loot. But um, I think these two settlements here you, uh, you have to loot anyways. And you can enter the forest area like this to actually go hunting on your own, because later on, you're pretty much all on your own. Or with a small posse or group. And, um, I don't know if I already said this, this is only a demo, so this isn't a full game. So, I might, I'm just going to cover as much as I can for this video, that might be an hour or so, it might be a decent amount of time. You're able to see the tents of your camp from a distance. You follow Jerome near his tent, then drop the deer on the ground. Well... We are going to eat effing deer tonight. Bleep. 
Uh, Jerome smiles and puts his hand on your shoulder. Well, well, well. Suddenly, Goron appears behind your back. You brought back a week of food. Goron, where are the others? You see Hector coming out of his tent. He doesn't seem to be too well. They're hunting south of here. You know Imra, or Irma. I don't know. I'm just going to call her Ma. You know Ma. She can't simply stand uh, doing nothing. Uh, anything else we can do? You don't seem to be very well. Neither do I. Say nothing. Uh, you don't seem to be very well, Hector. <coughs> I'm fine, I'm fine. Hector coughs a couple of times before speaking again. It's just a cold that won't kill me. Well, this deer isn't going to chop itself into pieces, so we better start doing that. And maybe we'll have some hours for another run. Let me do that. I'm stuck here anyways. My ankle still hurts and I'd better not walk around. Go for another run. Try to take as much food as possible. There's a long road ahead and I don't want to lose time every effing day. Let's stock some food. Jerome looks at the sun. We have time, so I guess we could go for another run. Uh, I'm ready to go. Just don't get asleep this time. I'm the old one. I am the one who is allowed to sleep for allowing at random. Come on, let's go. You take the lead this time. So this is what I mean. New objective, hunt until the evening. And it'll show up a little menu when you go into an area that you can hunt. Tutorial hint. In order to hunt, or order star hunting, enter the forest area and press the hunt button in the right corner. Which we don't have to do that because this is a tutorial and it already does that for us. You're in a relatively open area of the forest where it was easy to walk around. So there is quickly scavenge the area, which takes two hours, but it has high risk. Uh, scavenge the area takes to four hours, medium risk. And carefully scavenge the area, which six hours and decreases the risk. And um, a lot of the, of course, things randomly generate while you're in the forest. Uh, the first time since we have a lot of time today, in this day in the game, we'll carefully scavenge. You see a deer in the distance, and I'll have to shoot it with my gun because my f uh, firearm is better than my bow. You kill the deer and get some meat out of it. Now you have the option to either just take everything. Actually, I think this is the only op. Oh yeah, you can click and click OK. Um, plus five food, so we'll just take everything. I haven't really found out what the whole purpose of the uh, collecting fur from the deer was yet. I'm guessing maybe there's some craftable items in here. Finally, I really need to take some rest. You take a glance at the camp. Your companions are talking and taking care of dinner. It seems everyone came back safely. Goron approaches you. So how did it go? Uh, really good, it seems today is our lucky day. Uh, not too bad, we brought back something else to eat. Uh, yeah, let's go really good. Keep morale up. Uh, come near the fire. Dinner is almost ready. You will need it for tomorrow. Hector seems to be eager to move as soon as possible in the morning. You take your seat near the fire while the others greet you. Ma, Goran's wife, starts giving plates of cooked meat to the group. Let's be thankful to our hunters for the meat we're about to eat. Hector coughs after finishing to speak. Will you tell us where we are headed? Not far from here. Tomorrow we will go scavenging in a nearby town. Uh, hoping to find something useful for our traveling. No, I mean, where are we going to end up after the long run? Where will we spend the winter? We will travel south, far away from any common route. We must get away from the plains. Hector coughs again. The plains are becoming dangerous and I am not about the... Not about... I'm not talking about the bandits' activity. There are rumors about more and more red horsemen swarming around here. What does it mean? I'm tired of traveling without a purpose. We always stayed in the plains. Why should we travel to unknown lands? Don't worry, it's all snow and cold. Just like here. You didn't miss anything special. Who the heck is this guy? He's got a turtleneck and <laughs> he's got a turtleneck and like short lens glasses. I don't care what we do. If the planes have become that dangerous, we should probably go away. I won't put my children at risk without a reason, and traveling away from any known route is a risk, especially when the only thing we know is that we're going south. Uh does it really matter? The white wasteland is all the same, snow and dangers everywhere where no match traveling is part of our life. Uh, it would be nice to know a little bit more about what's ahead of us. That's enough. We have a leader because someone... Uh, let's go with doesn't really matter. That is true. For what we know, the white lace land has no end to the, uh, no end, and the mantle covers the whole world. 
I have the right to know where me, my husband, and my children are going to end. South is not enough. I want to know more about what we're going to face. There's no need to worry about that. We've already been south of here. Jerome turns to you. Do you remember when we found our friend? We're getting close to that area. Uh, say nothing. So we don't have to worry. At least two of us know we're a headache, so there's no reason to worry about the route. And what are you going to do next? Do we have a plan where to spend the winter? Or we're just running away from the planes by the real destination? Hector seems quite annoyed. I already said that the planes are becoming dangerous. You don't want a red horseman clan to assault us and enslave the survivors, do you? It's better to walk in the mantle for the whole winter rather than facing them. The sooner we'll run away from them, the safer it will be. Uh, so we have no choice that run on away. The proper plan, the right uh, we should think about find a decent place running away to get us killed. Probably is the best solution for us all. That's crazy. Uh, we'll figure out what to do. If the planes are actually becoming that dangerous, we have no other choice than to run away. And that's what I thought. I'm not either uh, eager to walk on unknown routes too, but at least we won't have to face the Red Horseman. Am I the only one with a working brain right here? We're running into the unknown. The unknown is better than certain death at this point. This is the safest choice. Yeah, because no one ever got killed because he didn't know what he was about to face. Do as you like, but I already know he will regret this. Ma goes inside her tent before giving anyone the chance to say anything. Or say something. I'll talk to her. I worry too, but facing the red horseman scares me even more. She will understand eventually. <laughs> Hector coughs a little bit before uh, replying. I hope so. I don't ever want to discuss this ever again. Nothing of importance happens during the rest of the night or the rest of the evening. You eventually go to bed and prepare yourself for the next day. Y you wake up in the morning. You hear some voices outside. Hector and the others are preparing uh, preparing the plan of the day. Okay, people. Now we will spread out into couples and search for anything useful in the small town over there. Let's see if we can find some tools. Mom will stay here with the children and guard our stuff. If anything happens, you scream. I will go with Jerome. Goran will go up with Mark. Hector turns to you. And you will go with Demetra. I hope it won't be a waste of time, Goran puts on his backpack. I'm tired of seeing only empty buildings. So, now we're about to depart, and we can ask a few questions about the area before we really go. Um, to be quite honest, I've already played this before, so I know where the demo ends. Which is why um, I've actually been choosing different choices from the last time I've been playing this game. So, these are some of these are new dialogue for me. Um, is there something in particular that we need? Tools and anything we can use to sell or, or sell to use. But I won't complain if you bring back an assault rifle. Uh, ask about the area. Is there anything we need to know about this place? It's a little ancient town, so there's a lot of buildings, and I hope to find something to scavenge, something left behind. Alright, depart. Wow, Demetra looks like an elf. She looks like a... She looks like a wood elf or a dark elf off of Skyrim. Probably what off, because Dark Elves are gray. Demetra nods at you. I'll follow your lead. Alright, so this is what I was talking about. Um, the next part of the mission will be... Or, yeah, the next part of our... Tutorial will be scavenging. To start scavenging, enter an area and press the scavenge button in the right, hand, in the right corner. Um, I'm sure let's carefully scavenge. You find a little house with a sturdy closed door. Uh, let's try lockpicking it. You successfully managed to open the door. You got 15 damage. And that's the only problem I have with this game, is apparently you take damage from... You pretty much take damage from any action you do, which is kind of ridiculous, but uh... It's alright, so we got s plus 6 in uh, medicine, no food, plus 1 gas, uh, no bullets. You successfully managed to open the door. So, it looks like here we have some flashbangs and a few rope. I'll take one flashbang because I don't know how useful any of the other items are. So, we have a crowbar. I should probably equip that. We have no guns. Um, oh, it's a smoke grenade. And we have a grappling hook. Uh, two things of rope. Fur. Not really sure what we do with fur. But we also do have an inventory weight, so we do have to be careful of what we actually carry. Uh, 
After a couple of hours, you manage to reach the others at the camp. Goran spots you from a distance and greets you by raising his hand. You can see the sadness on his face. What's going on? That is not easy to say. Goran takes a deep breath. Hector is badly sick. He passed out a few hours ago and he's in his tent, barely able to breathe. That's awful. He didn't seem so sick. Will he survive? Uh, the situation is desperate. We have no medicine to cure this kind of sickness and he's pretty bad now. You see Jerome coming out with Hector's uh, coming out from Hector's tent. His face painted with suffering. As far as you know, he and Hector have been good friends for a long time. People gather around Hector's tent, and Mark takes the word. How is he? In the same moment, Ma comes out of the tent. Jerome signs. It's over. We couldn't do anything. Holy F. Why didn't he say anything about his health? You know Hector. He wanted us to go away from the planes, and he didn't want us or want anything to stop us. Gurren stays silent for a second. Then he raises his head and speaks again. I will prepare the body for the funeral. You should go take a break. People scatter around while Jerome comes near you and signs again. You two are alone now. I met Hector more than 20 years ago and yet he said nothing. Not to anyone, not to me. He just died, leaving a mess behind. Tomorrow we'll need a vote for the new leader and it will be a mess. Everyone will discuss. I bet Ma will go crazy again, screaming and threatening people. I don't know what to say. Uh, don't worry, we'll get through this mess. Uh, he should have said something. Maybe we could have saved him. Uh, we'll get through this mess. We will, as we always do, but it won't be easy. Rough times are ahead of us. I need to be alone for some time. Call me when Goran has finished the, uh, the prior. Jerome walks away and sits alone, not so far from the camp. After some time, you are called by Demetria. Everything is ready for the funeral. All the, people's, or all the people gathers around a big stack of wood. After making sure that everyone is there, Goran throws a lit torch of the prior which slowly starts to burn, shrouding Hector's body in a dance of bright flames. Jerome has a sad face and nothing say, or says nothing. He just stands in front of the prior and stays there even after everyone else is gone. You're tired and you proceed to your tent, hoping to get a decent night of sleep. But a terrible scream wakes you up in the middle of the night. Okay, that was insanely loud. You see strange lights through the fabric of your tent and hear the noise of cl clogs stomping around. Several guns uh, firing as well. You're under attack. During the night, your group gets attacked by some bandits. Uh, engage the enemy melee. I have 20 bullets. Group health, morale, enemies. Uh, sure, let's engage melee. Next. You feel weak and aching. You try to crawl on the ground, but with each moment you feel the pain all over your body. You try to stay awake, but soon your willpower weakens and you pass out. After that, there's only darkness. You don't know how you, uh, how long you stayed unconscious. Strange dreams populate your rest. Dreams of different places at different time. You see a shiny tower going towards the sky. Technology you've never seen in the white wasteland. Technology belonging to an ancient world which fell apart. During the dream you hear a familiar voice. It's Jerome's and he's calling you, asking you to wake up. You finally realize you're dreaming and this sudden consciousness brings you back to the world. Hey, wake up, are you okay? Uh, how long have I been knocked out? Just some hours, but don't worry. You didn't lose anything. Uh, good to see. You look around yourself. The morning sun blinds you at first. Then you're able to see that you and your mates are sitting on the ground tied. You're not the only prisoner, and there are other people that seem to share your condition. Armed bandits are guarding the area. You can see many tents scattered around, and it's difficult to understand how many there are. Running away from them won't be easy. They have guns and everything else they need to keep us in place. You will never escape. We tried, but there are too many. They have horses and guns. And if they want us alive, I fear we'll all be soon become slaves. I'd rather die than live a slave. We're getting free sooner or later. Precisely. We all know how slaves are treated, like animals. I won't be beaten again just because someone of you or someone of you wants to do something that stupid. They beat us all, Joseph, but what should we do? Just wait here uh, to be sold as slaves? 
Long story short, we tried to run away during the night. They found us and beat the crap out of us. End of story. I'll take care of that. I'll find a way to set us free. Unless you have a freaking genius idea, I'd like not to be get beaten again, too. Screw you. I'd rather die than being a slave. We're leaving. I don't know how, but we're leaving. The stranger smiled slightly. Sure, I'm really curious to see what you will do. A bandit approaches you and starts screaming. Shut the F up, all of you. We're moving now. Prepare yourself. It's going to be a long walk. You and all the other prisoners start walking with your hands tied along the bandit's caravan. They constantly watch you and you're unable to find a break, uh, you're unable to find a way to break free. Day after day, you start to resign to your destiny. The bandit's constantly watching over you. You don't, and don't allow you to even talk amongst yourselves. You barely get to know the others who will share your destiny. Carlos and April are the couple that were attacked in the same group with Joseph when they got attacked and kidnapped. There's a young girl, Eva. She seems sad and never speaks. The only thing you're able to discover is that the bandits killed her family. Ah, uh, but finally, after walking for several days, though, or through the White Plains, ah, oh, goddammit, this is too much reading. Some something happens. The bad thing is that it doesn't look like something good, not at all. You see people peacefully approaching the bandits. They don't look like common survivors. Even the bandits who assaulted you, despite their good resources, are not that well equipped. Polished and shiny weapons, high-tech equipment, all the bandits look at these three people with uh, reverence and awe. You never saw someone so well equipped walk into the white wasteland. A feminine voice comes from one of those masked soldiers. Proceed with the test and let's move on. We have no time to waste. I'm sure they're good for your needs. Some prisoners are young and healthy. Uh, they are perfect for your needs. The woman slowly turns to face the bandit and stands still for a couple seconds in an intimidating silence. We'll see. They approach you and some other prisoners and start using the medical equipment to take some of your blood. They take a sample from each, of, uh, each one of you. They go away and after some minutes they come back again. The mysterious woman looks at Goran and Ma and then nods uh, at her two companions. Take these two and their children. They're the only ones we're interested in. Do what you want with the others. We have no use for them. They walk away bringing Gorham and Ir uh, Ma with them. Jerome tries to stand on his feet in protest, but he gets kicked in the stomach and falls on the ground. The mysterious strangers leave, taking them with, uh, taking your companions with them. While they disappear into the mist, the bandits give you the order to stand up and prepare to walk. You're now walking, just like any other day, with armed guards all around you. When you hear some screams coming from some bandits, you turn to see what's happening. At least 30 horsemen are charging the bandits, quickly descending from the top of the hill. They're wearing red. They are the red horsemen, feared bandits, and pillagers. The bandits start shooting at them, but the horsemen rapidly reach their position and start attacking your capturers in close combat. Jerome screams before he starts running away. Let's go, now! That's very dramatic. You and the other prisoners start running away while the bandits are too busy worrying about their own lives. You keep running away from your capturers while you hear bullets going towards you. One of those bullets hits Joseph on his chest and he falls to the ground. April stops running and kneels on her companion's body. Joseph, Joseph, please stand up. Uh, keep running away from the bandits. Drag April away. Tell her to lead the body. Uh, keep running. Carlos turns around and starts yelling at his wife. For F's sake, run. He's dead. Run. Someone keeps shooting at you, but the bullets pierce the snow around you without uh, hitting anyone. You're too far away to be an easy target now. You see a tunnel entrance ahead of you, and your group stops running towards it. There starts running towards it, not stops. They're getting far away from your capturers, who seem to be busy fighting the horsemen. You take a last look behind you, and you see no one coming after you. The tunnel is quite long, but after a few minutes, you finally see the light and the cold wind coming from the outside. Uh, really? Because I don't, I don't see where we are. I don't see our position at all, apparently. Oh, there we are. We're right there. We need to go over here. You spawn an old house and tell everyone to get inside. You should be safe until... You should be safe and able to rest, at least for some time. Well, we can stay here for the night. I don't think they'll come after us. Fine, let's see if there's something useful inside the place. The group starts scavenging the place. It looks like somebody's shelter, but it has clearly been abandoned years ago. You find some useful supplies, such as a couple 
handmade bows and some arrows, some very rusty blades, and three bandages that seem clean enough to be used. While Dimitri is preparing a fire, you see Ava speaking up. What shall we do now? Uh, we'll survive like we always do one way or another. I don't think I'll be able to keep running like we did today. You can leave me here. I can take care of myself. While Eva is talking, you see Jerome asking you to come near him with a gesture of his hands. Then you turn again, uh, your attention again to Eva. Don't think about it. I'm not going to leave you alone dying in these woods. I'm not a child. I'm more capable of taking care of myself. I'm sure at that, but that doesn't mean that you need to be alone. Life out here is easier with somebody looking at your back. Eva lowers her eyes and waits for a couple seconds before answering. Fine, but I don't want to be treated like children. I'm old enough to deserve the respect. Uh, and you will have it, I promise you. Now let me go talk to my friend. He seems to be on the edge. Okay, and thank you for being nice to me. I'm tired of people uh, that can only see me as a little child. She turns away and starts sitting near the fire. You can finally approach Jerome, who seems eager to talk to you. Now listen to me, and listen carefully. You know how it works with families and new people. We are here with three strangers, but the girl is clearly too young to have my uh, any authority on this matter. Me and Demetra will just pretend that you are a leader before that crap happened. The tradition is that the newcomers accept the family leadership, and we can't say them that our leader died the same day the bandits attacked us. We'll treat them as new members of the family, and since there is an actual leader, that Carlos guy won't argue with that. Or at least, I hope so. Are you okay with that? Uh, why did you choose me? Why can't you be the leader of our... Me? No, I'm too old for that. I don't have the strength to be the leader. You've proven to be a resourceful person and you will do just fine. Just remember to listen to old Jerome's advice. Uh, will you? Now, let's go talk to our new companions. When everyone is gathered around a fire, Carlos begins what will be a long decision. Or discussion, not decision. So what now? Do we know where we are safe? Yes, this is the Vale, a relatively enclosed territory not so far from where we got caught. And what shall we do? I suppose we have to choose a new leader, don't we? Uh, it won't be necessary. We'll welcome you as newcomers and you will accept our current leader. I can assure you that you won't regret this choice. So we are the newcomers now? I can accept that, but know that I won't shut up just because uh, you say so. We want to be treated as family. And you will, you can be sure of that. Good to know that. So what shall we do now? Our friends are in the hands of some mysterious and incredibly well-equipped fighters who deal with local bandits for unknown reasons. We need to track them down and hopefully save them. That won't only allow us to free our friends, but also to discover who, uh, who are those people and where they took their awesome equipment. They had everything that a survivor needs, and even more, I'm getting old and it would be nice to finally live a decent life. But the direction is unknown to us. We can't just ask to everyone we meet if they have seen some super soldiers passing by. They might be one of those mercenary groups. They're usually rich, uh, rich and well-equipped. We may not want to deal with them uh, at all, actually. We can't ignore the fact that their friends got kidnapped either. The first thing we need to do is be able to survive easily. We have nothing right now, and we can't clearly face some high-tech soldiers without a decent equipment and lots of supplies. I agree on that. It's crazy to start tracking some killers with only a couple of homemade bows. We need to get back on our feet. Yeah, but we can do that while searching for them. I'm not saying to do anything stupid, just looking for them and our friends. I have a friend not so far from here. He lives in a settlement called the Wind Tower. He's a weapons trader, and maybe he will know what to, uh, more about them. He deals with special stuff too, so if these mercenaries are local, he may know some of them. How far is that place? No more than a couple of days from here, I'm pretty sure of it. People keep talking and you quickly discover that April and Carlos are good, co uh, good company. Ava is a little bit more silent, but she seems to know enough about survival to not be a problem for your group. In the final game, you'll be able to privately talk with your companions using a button on the uh, left top corner of the map screen. Yeah, so like I said before, this game clearly not finished. And, um, pretty much this part of the game is you can travel this part of the game you can basically travel to the wind district or this town right here and pretty much pretty much you try to oh I didn't mean to do that oh god damn it 
You're traveling with your party when you start hearing some strange noises. And a few minutes later, the noises get stronger and you're unable to understand their nature. So, like I was trying to say, is, um, pretty much all you go to, all you can go, all you can do is go to that town, talk to the, some of the vendors, and get some information about the mercenaries, and that's when the game stops. There are a few side quests apparently you can do, so we'll try getting through those as quickly as possible. Some people are animatedly discussing near an old house. Um, most of them are armed with melee weapons, but the one that seems to be the leader is talking to the other while a gun in his right hand. Talk to them. You slowly walk towards the strangers, and as soon as you see, or they see you, the man with the gun in his hand comes closer and addresses you. Greetings, fellow travelers. I don't know what brings you here, but since you didn't attack us, I hope you are honorable people. Am I right? Despite the kind words, the man keeps holding his gun. You are, my friend. What kind of trouble brings you here in the middle of, no uh, middle of nothing? We got here tracking one hell of a criminal. This man is pure evil and killed three of our people. Now he's hiding inside that house. Will you help us deal with him? He's armed and we don't want him to kill more of us. Suddenly you hear a deep voice from coming from inside the house. It won't be necessary on coming outside to f uh, face my fate. A massive black man comes outside the house, carrying a little girl in his arms. You can clearly see the blood dripping from the girl's body and falling on the ground. The man with the gun and his people raise their weapons and fearfully draw back from the man. The mysterious man comes closer and you can see an expression of pure despair on his face. Are you happy now? You took the life of my little girl and now you'll take mine too? How glorious and noble you are. Shut up you filthy scum, you killed three of my brothers. You brought this upon you. The black man falls to his, to his kneels, that should be knees. Falls on his kneels. It slowly lays the girl, his body in the snow. You can clearly see that she was shot in her chest. Why don't you tell them the whole story? Why don't you tell them how you captured me and my family? How you wanted to sell us as slaves? Don't listen to him, he's lying. He's a lying n-word, and he should be punished for his crimes. Demetra is silent, but she clearly disgusted by the scene. I won't let you do- I won't let you kill a man just because he's born with darker skin. What? Are you crazy? What does that mean? Attack the armed man without saying a word. The mysterious black man jumps to his feet and smashes the armed guy with incredible strength. Then he grabs a gun from the ground and starts shooting. You face a group of poorly equipped but quite threatening raiders. Engage a fight with melee. Alright, Spike. Next. One of your companions is falling on the ground and is about to get beaten. Uh... Shoot at will to defend your companion. You successfully shoot your enemy down. Sweet. Alright. The combat system in this game is quite long and can be possibly a little bit annoying. You get pushed away from the first line and two enemies move towards you. Shoot them before they come too close. You successfully shoot your enemies down. Alright, sweet. You successfully shoot your enemies down. Now engage with a melee fight. You spawn an enemy knocking an arrow. Oh no, they took my smoke grenades, didn't they? Alright, shoot them. Engage in melee. Defend yourself at close quarters. The enemy moves faster than you, and you get beaten. Alright, so we'll beat him again. A hostile horseman is charging in your direction. Shoot him. You successfully shoot the enemy down. Uh, beat him again. Shoot again. Beat him again. You see an enemy running away from the fight. Take him down with a bow before he gets too far. Try to take him down with a single shot. You successfully shoot him down. And then we'll beat him again. You kill to every enemy, the fight is over. Yay! You take a moment to look around, your companions and the black man are taking care of the fools who didn't escape when they had the chance. The fight is over and the black man is standing idle with his hands and clothes covered in blood. He's looking at the little girl's body without emitting a single noise. Uh, was she your daughter? The man raises his eyes. His expression is no longer furious. On his face, you can see only sadness and despair. He finally talks to you. She was. They took everything from me. Everything. 
We have always been victims of racism, but no one went that far. Not until we met them. Why should they do something like that? Because they were driven by hate and ignorance. They didn't want to accept m our mere existence. They took our things and our lives because they were able to. It's easier to forget about ethics when you can blame someone else for being different. What will you do now? I will bury my beautiful child. His voice trembles and he starts to cry. And I will stand there watching over her until I die. If that's what you desire, do as you wish. Don't surrender yourself to the white death, Demetra. Uh, Demetra can feel that your last moments... Wait, don't surrender yourself to the white death. Demetra can feel that your last moments have yet to come. Come with us. You just can't surrender like this. This world has become empty for me. I have no reason to survive, not anymore. The legendary heroes may have brought the strength to fight even without a family, but right now I am nothing than a, uh, nothing than an empty shell. We won't force you to come with us, but we're th uh, we're more than willing to welcome you. Thank you, stranger. I will. Please, leave me alone for some time. I want to be with my child a little longer. The man leaves, taking the girl's body with him. After some time, he returns to talk to you. My name is Mobile Jo- I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. I'll just call him Mobo. My name is Mobile, stranger, and I will do my best to help you and your companions. I don't know you, but you try to do the right thing and that's enough for me. I will do everything that's necessary for survival of this group, but I have a single request. Please respect my warning and don't ask me to tell you what happened, or better pretend nothing happened at all. I understand and welcome to our family, Mobo. I hope you will find peace traveling with us. Alright, so now that bad situation's over. Uh, let's go back to looting this town like I wanted to originally do. You found a small town? Uh... Show us to the four hour one, because apparently nobody's here. You find a little police station. It appears to be completely locked. Leave... Uh, we're all out of pick locks. Let's use a grappling hook. You can successfully get on the roof. Alright, sweet. So we find an axe, a lighter, and I think that's a torch. Uh, have we gone to this tunnel yet? So like I said, there's a lot to explore in this game, so um... We're gonna have to explore what we can. You walk in while you stumble across a solid object and falls to the ground. The object is a wooden box and inside you f find lots of bullets. It's probably a secret stash left by a nomad. Uh, leave the cash untouched. Take everything. Take some- take everything, obviously. You pick up the bullets. Oh man, we're running out of food pretty fast. We might actually have to go hunting. You kill the deer and get some meat. Awesome. Oh, I, I didn't go hunting. That was from the last one. Uh, carefully scavenge the area. <laughs> kill the deer. Take everything. And we can't go hunting again, so I guess we'll just have to deal with what we have. So, like I said, this game is actually pretty long for just a demo. Mainly, it's just a lot of reading right now. You're slowly walking on the snow, just like any other day. When the weather starts to rapidly change, a storm is coming in. You better prepare your uh, proper shelter before it strikes. We must hurry. We don't have much time. You start walking faster in a desperate search for the decent shelter, but you're far away from any building. Snow starts to fall on the ground, and just in a few minutes, it becomes more and more. Your visibility drops down and you are barely able to spot a few yards from behind. April, April, where are you? This didn't happen to me last time. Is this because I took my time? Because I never had a storm before when I played this. April's voice is weak and distant. You can barely understand what she says. I'm here, I'm coming. I just stumbled on a rock. Chief, I'm going to find her. I won't leave you. I won't leave her alone in the storm. Fine, but be careful. Uh, we'll meet up after the storm. Light a big fire, I will find you when it uh, will be safe. Carlo starts running and disappears into the falling snow. You keep walking, hoping to find some place where to stay, but your feet uh, subside into the snow and each step is harder than the one before. You feel the cold wind on your face and the snow is completely covering you. If you don't find a shelter, you'll die soon. A sudden gust of winds throw you on the ground and you hit your head off something metallic. A piercing pain throws down your head and uh, your sight fades for some seconds. Stand up, please stand up. Don't die here. Eva is tugging you and you immediately recover your senses. After some seconds, you finally manage to stand up again. 
but you're unable to see anything. The group is completely scattered and you are alone with Ava. I'm glad you're okay. Did you see the others, uh, where the others are directed? No, I saw you falling on the ground and hitting something, so I came here to see what if you're alright. Uh, come on, Ava, let's go find a safe place. Please hold my hand, I don't want to get lost into the storm. Sure, give me your hand. You keep walking into... You keep walking into when you finally find a guardrail, and there's some badly damaged fence near it. Uh, follow the fence. You follow the fence, and after a while you spot a big wooden building. It isn't the best shelter in the world, but it's better than nothing. Go into the building. You finally found a shelter. It's not a place where you could happily live, but having even a little protection for the fear of storm is better than keep walking outside waiting to die of frostbites. The place is cold, and you'll need a fire to survive long enough to see the storm fades away. Well, we just did pick up an axe. Ava is badly shaken, and she's just barely able to speak. I am so cold. Uh, hug her. Come here, and put your arms around her. She keeps trembling, but after a couple of minutes, she seems to be a little bit better. Eva is silent while you hug her. Uh, she just places her arms around your chest. Thank you, I'm better now. Uh, do what you have to do. You start a campfire using a few useful items. You find around. It will not last long, but it will hopefully last until the storm ends, allowing you to survive. You and Ava gather around a small fire, carving for, uh, craving for heat, while your entire body seems frozen to the bone. Some, warmful fi uh, some warmth finally starts to flow into your hands, and your muscles slowly reduce to tremble. The time passes and the storm finally ends, leaving behind itself a quite clear sky. You feel external temperature rising, and now you can only need to find your companions. Ava doesn't seem too healthy, but at least she survives. She stands up and puts her backpack on. I'm ready to go. Let's find the others. You start gathering your things while you see a smoke column rising towards the sky. At least someone has survived. It takes a while to reach the place, but finally you see big pyre burning in front of an isolated house. You see Demetrius throwing some wood into the fire. I was waiting for you, glorious reader. I'm glad to see you're alive. When we lost you in the storm, I feared the worst. I am glad, too, to see you're still walking on this frozen world, too. Where are the others? Why are you alone? I don't know. My guidance, the storm scattered us like snowflakes. If we're lucky, they're alive and walking towards this fire. You suddenly hear a distant scream and focusing your hearing on a clearly the stern word, help. Did you hear that? You start running towards April's voice, and after some seconds, you are able to see what the problem. A building collapsed, and according to April's scream, Carlos is trapped inside. Thank God you're here. Carlos went inside to do a check... A quick check on the place and the damn roof collapsed on his head. You can hear Carlos voice coming from the rebel. F F F F F. Come on, let's take him out of there. Yeah, that would be very nice of you. You hear some noises and when you turn to its source you see a uh, mobile running towards you. What's happening here? Carlos is trapped beneath the rebel. This building looks old. It wasn't a smart idea to go into the right right after the storm. The snow weight uh, the snow's weight broke the roof. Thank God we have Thank God we have your brilliant mind to point out the obvious. If you, Carlos, I'm not the one who's ignored reason to walk into a deadly trap. You're lucky to be alive. Uh, please, guys, do not fight. We need to save them. Let's get to work. Let's be careful. We need to act with light hands and patient caution to... And patient caution of the entire building will collapse. We'll waste half the day just to get them out. Uh... The next time he'll be more careful. Or maybe he will just die under the snow. You spend some time digging Carlos out while Maha, uh, Mobile keeps complaining and April worried and Climus doesn't help the mood. After more than more than an hour, Carlos is finally free. Oh god, are you okay? Carlos <sighs> limps to reach a rock and sits on, holding his right leg. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you, guys. Is it broken? I hope not. It just hurts, but I think it will soon pass. Why the F did you enter in there? It was clearly dangerous. Look at the wood that is completely ruined. Shut up, we went through the worst places. I just unlucky, that's all. Unlucky, you were an idiot. We were scattered around. You decided to enter in there? That's just stupid. F you, do you think that would be some sort of walking wisdom? That's not the right moment. We need to get going as soon as possible. If you want to continue with this child, just spat, wait tonight, and we'll make a camp. Bobo just looks at you in silence and nods with his head before walking away. Carlos stands up and walks away, trying to hide the pain coming from his legs. I didn't start it. I don't want to continue it. 
Let's go back and to take their stuff. Or our stuff. Your group starts packing up and in a few minutes you're ready to go. There's some tenseness in the air, but no one argues anymore. So this game is completely randomized because, um... Before when I started playing this game, that never happened. Mainly because I went through all the main objectives before I actually continued the story. So that's actually... It's actually pretty cool. That a random event like that just happened. Because the first time I was never in a storm, which I thought was pretty interesting. So there must be random events like that scattered around the area everywhere. Which makes this game pretty interesting and pretty... Pretty decent game to get. And like I said before, this is probably gonna get a, probably gonna be a long video. I'm gonna re try to cover as much as I possibly can. I think by now this video has gotta reach over half an hour, maybe half an hour, maybe 40 minutes by now. You arrive at the town and start looking around. There aren't a lot of buildings, but it seems a relatively unspoiled place. Drone comes near you and lowers his voice, so you're the only one who's able to hear him. Go with Carlos and April. Check how they behave. Jerome turns and starts speaking to everyone. We'll split up in groups and go searching for supplies in a building that do not look either too damaged or already looted like a hundred times. I'll take the northern area and Eva and Demetra uh, will help me see what's there. Our fantastic boss will go with our couple to check the southern part of this town. It's fine for me. Are we looking for something in particular? Uh, just anything useful. Okay, let's not waste our time and check these buildings. That's not... Uh, that one looks promising. You spend some time searching around the building. Sadly, without the proper tools, like a light source or a crowbar, it's not easy to find a place that has already been completely looted. While you're walking across the town, you hear April's voice calling from New Carlos. Guys, over here, I found something interesting. You see April near the border of the town, among some trees, pointing her finger towards a building hidden by the woods. It's a strange-looking building, but seems to be intact and being not so easy to see. You think that maybe it wasn't looted, or at least not completely. Well, it looks promising. Let's take a look inside. You get closer to the building and reach for the door's handle. You slowly open the door and allow the external light to come inside. The inside is full of dust and dirt. It looks like nobody's visited this place for decades. You look around and see the last people who came here. The mummified bodies of some ancient soldiers who sought a refuge from the war. Everything seems untouched since these soldiers died. Maybe they were wounded. Maybe they ran out of food. Anyway, they have almost no flesh attached to them. It's hard to tell how they died. Oh my god, are these ancient people? Light military clothes, no snow equipment, heavily decomposed bodies, just they're either ancient or some of the first survivors. Um, explore the building. You go through the door across the room and enter in a smaller place that contains, that contains some strange electrical equipment connected to different wires. You can detach some of the parts from the device, but it's hard to tell if they're will be somebody willing to buy them. Uh, yeah, that's just a norm for now. Inspect the bodies. The bodies are much more than mere skeletons, with a little rotten flesh on them. You start searching among their things, hoping to find something useful. They look like soldiers, but there is no weapons around here. Somebody has already looted this place. Maybe it was a long time ago. And maybe they left something behind. You spend some time searching the bodies and their belongings, and you manage to find two dozen bullets and three pistols. They seem rusty, but still working. Some luck, finally. I mean, there are no assault rifles, but at least we will be able to shoot back to anyone who comes shooting at us. And apparently everyone is obsessed with assault rifles in this game. The backpacks will be useful, too. Not that I enjoy the back pain at the end of the day, but we have nothing where to put our stuff. Uh, inspect the main room. The room is large and full of dust. Yeah, I think we just explored that, so we'll just leave. Well, at least we didn't waste our time. Uh, you spend you spend some other time searching around the town, and after some time, you go to the uh, place center of the town where you wait for the others to come back. You don't need to wait too long and see Jerome and Demetra and Eva gathering at the meeting point. They found something useful too. So how did it go? We got lucky. Our fearless Eva right here snuck into a building through a little hole and found some useful things inside. I told you I'm a capable survivor. I had a good teacher. I'm sure you did. Jerome smiles at the girl. Anyway, she found some nice stuff in there. An old gun and a decent crowbar and some rope. We didn't find much more around, but I spotted some medical plants and took them. They're good for healing wounds. We found some weapons, three nice pistols that seemed to be working. Then, searching around the town, we managed to find some lockpicks and some bandages. Not bad. Now we can travel feeling a little safer than before. Now let's go find my friend. 
You put all the stuff into the backpacks and find some, and uh, walk away from the town. There's finally some optimism in the group. So this is the area we're supposed to go. Which, um, the night comes. Rest without a proper fire, find a safe place. Find a safe place. So, uh... I think what I'm gonna end up doing... Oh, we found some ammo. Take everything. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is... God damn it! Find a safe place! I'm gonna end up going to the town... And then we're gonna end up saving. I'll stop the video. That'll be it for now. Because I'm pretty sure this video has gone on for quite some time. So we'll go to the local inn. And um... I will stop the video here, and this will be our first video, so I will see you guys in the next video. Hopefully it won't be as long as this one was. And I hope you guys enjoy the series. I will do a couple of videos on this. I will, I will definitely do a couple of videos on the demo, and I will definitely have to update the game once it starts coming out. And I will see you guys in the next video. Uh-uh.